Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press. It's our segment on The Breakfast where we take a look at the newspaper headlines um, making the rounds today in Nigeria. And let's begin with the daily independent newspaper. Uh, the headline reads, IGP to policemen be ruthless with armed groups in Southeast. Rose out Operation RP gives them 14 days to get results. Above the headline on the Daily Independence, Buhari Six National Assembly approval for $6.183 billion external loan. Somolu launches 500 first and last mile buses. The governor here is saying buses are alternatives in Okada restricted routes. Below the headline on the Daily Independence, why immigration suspended new passports to applicants? Okua dissolves cabinet, ask permanent secretary to take over. COVID-19, NAFDA grants conditional emergency use for Janssen vaccine. Three soldiers, two bandits killed as terrorists attack troops. Also on the daily independence, Kaduna strike. El Rufai says government won't change position. Sacks nurses. Attacks from thugs won't stop us, and that's uh, according to the NLC. And uh, return to negotiating table, APC governors urge El Rufai, NLC. We see a picture here as well. It's of uh, President Mohamed Buhari and uh, President Emmanuel Macron of France uh, during his arrival at the Grand Palace, the LEC Palace uh, for the African Finance Summit in Paris. Also on the Daily Independent, Abiodu suspends aid over alleged $650 million fraud in the U.S. Okay, we saw 350 first, now it's 650. National identification number, Senate asked Education Ministry and IMC to review policy. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. All right, now on the punch, New Swifers. Uh, NLC threatens general strike as El Rufai declares Waba wanted. SAN's slam Erofi over order on Waba. NOC president dares governor. Northern uh, governors seek dialogue. ACF warns as hoodlums attack workers. And state governor dismisses nurses below level 14, says mass sacking stands. We can also find on the pond this morning, MFLF foresees production boost with AKT Rice Pyramid. And explosion in ex-governor Daniel's hotel kills two in Ogun State. Police assume uh, youth protest as um, EFCC arrests 34 suspected internet fraudsters. Good thing we spoke about uh, a little bit about that this morning. Mm -hmm. Also this morning, uh, uh, guard um, assault CCT chair absent as panel, uh, absent at panel rather, cites poor health. NIS threatens sanctions against officials over passport crisis and suspended Abiodun's aid faces 30 years in prison over $350,000 fraud. We can also find here National Assembly pro uh, probes alleged customs Salade killings in your state. And NACA grounds aero aircraft over river's bird strike. 10 billion naira fraud, EFCC probes, Afegwa's allegations, summons PDP chiefs. And I think I'll just squeeze in one or two others. Um, LCCI, ACCI, and others raise concerns as Buhari seeks nod for fresh $6.1 billion loan. Take note of negative side of excessive borrowing, says ACCI. Now borrowing is for, is for capital projects, says uh, the DMO. Those are the stories we'll take on the punch this morning. On the Nation newspaper, why petrol subsidy will be removed now by minister? Labor warns against plan. LCCI says we need innovative policy on petroleum. Above the headline on the Nation newspaper, France pledges full support for insecurity battle. Buhari says restructure our debt. Erufai fires nurses on solidarity strike and labor leaders wanted. President six lawmakers nod to take $6.18 billion loan. Bandits kill three soldiers, abduct two Chinese. Also above the Nation newspaper, federal government suspends passports application. Abiodo suspends aid held for fraud. We see a picture here of uh, buses lined up, you know, and packed. And the caption reads, 300 buses to kick off Lagos in a scheme. 
Below the headline on the Nation newspaper, IG orders policemen to be ruthless with cessation agitators and special operation inaugurated. Also, President hails new era at capital market. Two die, three injured in Ogun explosion. Those are the stories on the Nation newspaper. And now to the Guardian newspapers. Uh, fossil fuels uh, divestment may halt $150 billion oil gas projects. Federal government confirms receipt of 4.2 million pounds Iboru loot, loot and Delta State reacts. Also, Buhari seeks fresh 2.3 trillion naira loan to fund 2021 budget. Senate wants NIN dropped as requirement for exams. And uh, also this morning, I'm waiting for your arrest, Waba Dez El Rufai. Federal government uh, wades into NLC Kaduna face-off. Uh, Governor Sachs, Kaduna University lecturers and nurses. TUC and UPENG put members on red alert for national shutdown. And also, electricity workers consider shutting down power installations nationwide. Uh, well, I think uh, we have, uh, that's uh, most of what we're going to be taking on The Guardian this morning. And uh, we're getting straight into the uh, conversations. Uh, most of uh, the uh, papers already speaking about uh, the NLC strike mm -hmm. um, in Kaduna State and uh, also the uh, loan request by President Mohamed Buhari, yes. another 2.3 or 2.4 trillion naira loan to fund a 2021 budget. And multiple t times we've spoken about, um, you know, um, the dangers of borrowing, of course, uh, where we are financially with, um, in Nigeria. Let's bring in uh, senior news current um, uh, senior news editor, I beg your pardon, Kaya De Ladende, to join us this morning on uh, Off the Press. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, also, okay. Good morning, Aneta. Thanks for joining good us. Good to have you. Very interesting stories this Wednesday morning. Um, which of them would you like to start from? <laughs> of course, the biggest story is still the drama. Uh, whether you call it drama, whether you call it a, a face-up between the NLC and the Cardinal State Government, it's quite, um, I, I, I'm trying to choose my word, it's quite disturbing what we are experiencing in this age and time when we believe that our democracy has moved from nothing. I remember that was the word we always used when we started in 1999 and when we returned to democracy. But after 21 years of that, or 22 years of that, we're still having a full-blown authoritarianism uh, at play. However, I've, as a journalist, we've tried to listen to all sides, not just two sides. I listened to one argument where they are trying to justify the action of the Cardinal State Government that uh, there was a case of a two-year-old baby who was not attended to, who was on ventilator, and uh, there is a, a, a move to even, um, what's the word now, to arrest the nurses involved and charge them for attempted murder. But having said that, beyond the emotion, beyond the uh, several things that have been played up, we need to look at the issues critically. We need to call the governor to order. We need to make him realize that this is a democratic uh, government and we need to be true to the tenets of democracy. Uh, but where I have issues is where the NLC will be uh, is attempting to take this strike. So they want to make it a national strike. They want to draw the attention of the people. And that also underscores the argument surrounding the violent attack by some thoughts. There's no need to use the word alleged talk. These are thoughts. These are hoodlums. That's the word to use for them. You remember the country, you remember the debate on which word to use for the people that were being violent during protests, during the answers? Mm -hmm. They are hoodlums. And this is a clear case of hoodlums too. And who is responsible? It's easy for everyone to say that the government must have sponsored them. But where I want to caution the labor union is to let them realize that when you cut down electricity, when you call down some essential services that affect people directly, you might also be playing into the hands, in this case, allow me to use the word enemy, because this thing affects them. So you need to be more strategic. You need to make sure that any move you're making makes an impact rather than making it counterproductive. So generally, I want to look at this situation as something that um, must be nipped in the board not later than today, because it's quite embarrassing 
that in a, in, a, in a democratic dispensation, lecturers will just be sacked under the whims and caprices of an executive governor who is actually a servant of the people. And now nurses are also being fired. I think we need to match the break and right. get these people reinstated without necessarily being violent. Okay, well, we're going to have um, you know, a longer conversation about the, uh, on this. Uh, Ayuba Waba will be joining us this morning. Oh, on the program, interesting. So looking forward to hearing um, from him. Uh, let's also look at the um, well, another loan request. This time it says it's to fund the 2021 budget, uh, about 2.4 trillion naira, so yeah, $6.1 billion uh, by President Mamadou hmm. Buhari. Uh, the LCCI and the ACCI have expressed their own concerns. Um, about why this may not be a good move. What are your thoughts? Yes, basically, I think we will continue to emphasize this. As much as I'm not an expert when it comes to economics, but the simple logic we understand is good. It's fine to borrow money to fix your capital project. It's quite okay to endeavor to go into borrowing when it has to do with capital project. But what has happened with the ones you borrowed before? What is the repayment plan? This has not been clear. This has not been straightened out for us to understand. And nobody should tell us that we don't know anything. Nobody should tell us that we don't have a stake in this issue. Because this is the money we all contribute. It is our commonwealth. And therefore, we are free to express ourselves. So basically i think the, the the national assembly should stop the presidency from um, uh, um from giving them approval i know the national assembly no thanks to the fact that uh, they have been described as rubber stamp and you know why they have to be rubber stamped in the first place because the senate president and the speaker they are the candidates of the president and this was the whole idea to always have them as rubber stamp but I think they should also use their discretion. They should also use, uh, they should remember the people who voted them in the first place. Because if people have not voted them in, they would not become the Senate president or become the Speaker of the House of Representatives. We are not going to die. Things are not going to be impeded if that loan is not used or granted. Let's have accountability with what you've done before. I'm one of those people who were not so had on the Minister of uh, Transportation on the issue of rail, because especially if you have traveled to different parts of the world, you will wonder why we don't have functioning rail system. So whatever it is, whatever we can do to fix our rail, I am for it. But this time around, I think I am totally against the idea of borrowing. Okay, um, Mr. Kaede Ladende, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, the, the headline is about petrol subsidy. And we know that the Minister of State here is saying, you know, that petrol subsidy will be removed now. But if, if you watch what's been happening in the policy, it seems the government is yet to actually take a stand regarding fuel subsidy. Because in January, they will say it has been removed. In, in February, they will say, you know, they're now paying subsidies. The next month, they've removed it. So it just keeps going, you know, on and off. But now the Minister of State for, for Petroleum is saying they will take it out and that the common man is not benefiting from it, that only the rich people benefit from fuel subsidy. But Labour here is saying that that's just been unfair. Uh, how do you come in? <laughs> I wish the Labour used that uh my word that you just used. Uh, Labour is talking tough about it. But you know what, Aneta, one thing we will not do is to keep quiet about the lies, underline that word, the lies around this issue of subsidy. Uh, from time to time, this present administration has told us that uh, subsidy is a fraud. They, come, they came up with another word, I can't remember the synonym they used for it, that it's not subsidy. Now, they have the F on tree to tell us now that subsidy is about to be removed. So what has been happening? What has been happening to the budget year in, year out? Because budget is an act. It's a law. So, and if you have been spending money outside budget, it's a criminal offense, and somebody has to face the book. So what I'm saying, in essence, is beyond the drama, beyond the subtle removal that has always been taking place, we need to go back to the first question. We know they have made up their mind. We know they are going to get it removed. We know the price of fuel is going to go high. But you know my worry, Aneta, mm -hmm. tomorrow they will tell us, even when they've done this, 
that is, they are still paying subsidy and they want to remove subsidy. So we are going to continue to have inflation rate. So let somebody be sincere for the first time. And that's exactly my take. Okay. So uh, moving away from fuel subsidy, you know, in the light of all the unrest and violence, especially attacks on policemen, you know, checkpoints in the South, South and Southeast, we see that the Acting Inspector General of Police, Mr. Usman Alkali, has, you know, inaugurated a special operation and asked policemen to be tough on cessationist agitators. I don't know what you think about this one. No, mostly in the Another East. form of euphemism you've also used. The word I saw where you reading it is, they should be ruthless. Yes. And ruthless is stronger than tough. If it is tough, that would have not um, um, drawn some kind of anger we will get on this story. You know, the idea is whatever word you use, armed, armed, armed youth or armed old men, whatever they are, you're not supposed to be mad with them. You're not supposed to take it easy with them. But where the concern is, is why do we have to regionalize this kind of tough decision or tough action? So this is a language we should be using for any armed youth. As we speak, I'm sure it was on this station too, that we reeled out that report that the number of arms with people who are not licensed are more than that of the uniformed men, the military, I mean, I mean, the security agents across the country. That's what we should be looking at. Why are we going into the reactionary approach when we should look at the proactive? What happens to our borders? How did these guns get into the hands of these people? Are we pretending that we don't know that these issues, I mean, these weapons are not easy to buy? Are we pretending that there are some heavy weights who are behind the purchase of these weapons? Are we pretending that the helicopter that was, uh, 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 that was found to be carrying weapons that some people don't know about how the helicopter moved, where it was, who bought the helicopter, and who is using this? I think we are not going to be deceived by the surface of these stories. Let's get down to the real issue, and oh. then we will take government serious. So whether south is, whether south south, whether north west, whether north east, oh. definitely the security agents should be ruthless to anyone carrying arms because innocent citizens are not safe. All right, so still on, on security matters, well, would you, you know, suggest international collaboration regarding tackling this issue? Because we know that one of the headlines we've seen is a pledge by the government of France, the President Emmanuel Macron, saying they will stand by Nigeria to eliminate any, you know, insecurity uh, and, and uh, threats in the country. Annette, I can just imagine you being the media aide to the President. This is the first thing that you can write without these two presidents having a meeting. You cannot be having a meeting with a world power and not talk about how to tackle the issue of insurgency in your country. For me, there's nothing exciting, there's nothing newsy, so to say, about it. What we want to see is, let's see the action. Let's see this international collaboration. You remember the upbeat when we when the Chibok girls were arrested and we heard that U.S. government was coming in with their drones, they were coming into the country, they were going to get the girls, and there was so much excitement. And for whatever reasons, we understand there was some diplomatic uh, compromise, and uh, within, till today, some of these girls are still with the abductors. So please, they should save us that stress. Let, let French government come in, let them come with their weapons, let them come with their uh, uh mercenaries and get this insurgency sorted out well um there's also a story on the um nation i believe uh speaking about the ibori loot the receipt of the 4.2 million pounds ibori loot delta state government um of course is kicking uh, we remember we had a conversation about who that money really belongs to if it's the federal government or the <laughs> delta state government uh, so quickly react to that one also the money has arrived um should we celebrate <laughs> I, 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 I can't help but laugh about this because I know it's a serious issue and it's quite sensitive too. But trust me, I think Delta State Government 
needs to be more serious on this issue. You cannot be talking about using the repatriated funds when you didn't make any attempt, when you didn't shout about it. Now that the money has been returned for whatever reason, and they're going to use it outside your region, and now you want to fight but there, for but the there's money. that argument that it, you know delta state government itself cannot approach france you know some people have said that that it has to be the federal government that approaches uh, the government of uh, france um oh sorry the uk um, uk yes yeah, for you know money to, like that to be repatriated um so and at the same time the people of delta state you know can still argue that it, it's their money the money was taken from their coffers from their state exactly so 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 my take is why why was the Anthony general of delta state not working with the minister of uh, uh, justice all the way why were they not pursuing the case why were they not following up i'm just saying that while it is legitimate that that money was stolen from their state funds i think that one is not in doubt that the money was stolen because the man admitted that they stole money. So why, why, why were they quiet? Why are we looking at it that is our son? And don't forget that this man is still like the most powerful politician in the state. We cannot ignore that kind of, um, you, you know, window dressing, the, 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 this, this ex-convict, and you have not done much about it. So my take is the Delta State should learn their lessons from this. There are still more money to still be repatriated. Let them stand on the matter and let's not fight over repatriated funds. All right. That's my take. Kaidi Aladendi, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, thanks for speaking with us. Uh, looking forward to another uh, quick conversation with you. Okay, I think he's gone already. Uh, stay with us. Uh, what happened on this day, 19th of May, many years ago, we'll be sharing with you uh, after the short break. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <laughs>